New trainers that want to train their dog motivationally need to understand that they have to learn how to put their dog in a frame of mind where the dog wants to be with them and he wants to have what they have. In this short video, Michael Ellis talks about getting a dog engaged and how if you have engagement, teaching the dog exercises is easy. People really want to get in to teaching the dog behaviors. And the behaviors are a piece of cake if you have the dog in the right state of mind. So you spend a little extra time when they're young on this part of it, just going in different places and having them follow you and pay attention. They learn their communication system. They learn yes, good, no, or whatever your versions of those things are. And they learn to pay attention to you in stimulating environments and, at the, and hold their attention on you, stay engaged. And at that point, teaching them to sit and down is piece of cake, right? But when you have a dog that's in that state of mind, if I try to teach it to do something right now, it's going to be a nightmare. The dog's going to be checking out, and I'm going to start getting frustrated. I'm going to start pulling on the leash and doing stuff like, hey, hey, pay attention to me. And next thing you know, the dog's going to say, like, this whole obedience thing sucks. Like, I don't want to do this, right? And so just a little extra time at the beginning makes everything go 100 times smoother. And it's hard, and you're like, God, I want my dog to sit and down and do the stuff. But that comes really easily if you have the right sort of state of mind. And, yep, yeah, engagement, engagement, engagement. Yep. Yep. Yep, exactly. And, and I'm sort of building the tools that I'm going to use to shape behavior later, right? So they're learning our communication system, and they're learning to follow a lure, right? So by moving my hand around like that and getting them to chase it, I'm moving them into their body around. And so that I now have a tool for manipulating them into positions when I start trying to teach them something. So they know what their mar reward markers are. They know how to follow a lure. They stay focused on me. They want what I have. They'll tune out distraction. Now, teaching them stuff is, goes boom, 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 right? And you'll see we have little puppies that by the time they're three and four months old are doing lots of stuff. And that's because we spend a significant amount of time on this stuff first. And then it just goes, falls into place really quickly. And you can't rush this. I mean, the dog is going to do it on the, on the dog's timetable. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like some dogs are going to come out in two sessions. They're going to be following you around, not looking away from you. You're going to be like, that's great, cool, excellent. And some other dog, it's going to take you a few months of really practicing this stuff in a lot of environments before you have it. And you can't kind of force that timetable. You basically keep working at it. And the better the focus the dog is, the easier everything else is going to be. It's just, it's just difficult sometimes for people to say, like, God, my dog's like eight months old, and I'm still running around having it chase me around the room for food. It's, it's, it is what it is. And you will turn the corner with that dog, you know? And, and, it, and it, will, it will be worth it in the end, too. Like, so what I try to do is there's a balance between uh, letting the dogs experience the world so they're comfortable with it and making engagement with me. And one of the things that I want to do with little puppies a lot in the beginning is get them out in a lot of environments and take their energy and channel it into an activity that's a productive activity for me. So just tearing around, checking everything out, chasing leaves and stuff is not a productive one for me. The dog's having fun. They like it. They do burn off energy. And sometimes it's necessary to let the dog get a little something, a little bit uh, out of their system before I start working for them to kind of settle down in their head, and sometimes it's necessary. But I would prefer to take that energy and say, hey, why don't you put it into this? And we play something together, whether it's chase the food or it's a, with a toy or whatever it is, right? And I take that energy and make a game from it that I'll be able to use later. So now they come out and they're really pumped up, and they have all this energy, and I say, hey, how about we put that into obedience? Instead of saying, okay, burn off your energy, and now we'll do obedience, where you're like, okay, no, obedience, whatever, right? And so it's channeling of those, those energies and intensities into the right activities. Like I, what I like to call it, with, with most of our working dogs, they're slightly uh, obsessive compulsive, right? They get obsessed with certain physical activities, like lots of chase, prey behaviors, that kind of stuff, right? So the dogs want to chase everything. That they want to do that. And if you let them rehearse it, they'll become obsessed with whatever that is. So if it's chasing birds in your backyard or the neighbor's cat or whatever, they really quickly latch on to something and say, ah, this is fun, I want to do this, and they'll just do it and do it and do it and do it. And the more they rehearse it, the more intense they get about it, right? So what I like to do with our working puppies is what I call control their obsessions. 
I say, I know you're going to get obsessed with some stuff, so why don't you get obsessed with the things that I want you to get obsessed with, which is like a ball, a tug, food, interaction with me, that kind of thing, right? And so by channel being really on top of it when they're little, I basically set their brain up to say like, okay, these are the things that I obsessively do. Focus on you, play with you, chase a ball, whatever. And then later on, then I can use all those. Those are productive obsessions. We can have unproductive obsession, chasing squirrels, and we can have a productive obsession, which is playing ball with me or playing tug with me or whatever, right? So that's really what we're trying to do when they're little is, is teach them how to learn, build that engagement, and then control the endeavors that they start to put their energy into. And, and we try to make them. It's like you said, so loves a soccer ball. It's a classic thing, right? Oh, well, you we said I do that same thing with dogs in the early stages of my training. I would, I would go out and kick a ball for them, or I had a, a dog that was obsessed with basketballs, you know, and I'd buy all these old basketballs at the yard sales and kick them around, and the dog loved the freaking basketballs, man. They were berserk for them. Totally useless for me. I can't, I can't stick it down the back of my pants. I can't use it, like, I can't use it as an obedience reward. It, you know, it's difficult. It's the dog self-satisfying on some uh, activity that doesn't really help me. So instead, I just say, I know that's in you, the desire to want to play like that, so why don't I choose the things you play with and start trying to make it about this game and a game that I can use. So let's take all that stuff away, like she loves her eggy and her... Yeah, yeah, her yeah. I mean, like, you, obviously, the, the, again, we, we strike a balance between being able to live with a dog, so I have to give them some ability to self-satisfy without me entertaining them all the time, but I need to balance that with how engaged they are with me. Right? So the more the dog plays with me, and the better the dog plays with me, then the more I can allow them to self-satisfy doing other stuff. So right now if I'm struggling here. with the dog paying attention to me or wanting to play with me, then I take up that other stuff and say, hey, your only opportunity to express that, th that activity is with me. Okay, so I just, for now, yeah, I just take pull it, it back up, and then as she gets better, then you can put stuff back out for her to play with and things like that. But if you do too much of that, then she says, nah. Why should I work for it? I can go in the backyard and chase my Higgy around, <laughs> chase my Higgy around, or whatever. Exactly.